we have to talk about the M4 Sherman and how crazy good it is. Hello everyone, this is Avar teaching history to game. So, the M4 Sherman is one of the best tanks during World War II that served in all theaters. This is simply because it is super reliable and an all-rounder tank. But before we talk about the tank itself, let's talk about its history. Before the war, Americans doesn't have that much of a tank. Yes, you can see there's the M2 with its very very much cancerous machine guns. Like, somebody went up and came, yes, let's put 7 machine guns in a single tank. And it's not gonna have a problem. Yeah, but going on. As the war breaks out in Europe and the su stunning success of Blitzkrieg and the fall of Europe made the Americans realize that they need to master a proper tank force. And so to aid Britain and its allies through Lendlist's agreement, they really really need a tank that they can properly mass manufacture. Because apparently the British at the time lost most of its tank force, France fall, and the Soviets has no idea on what on earth they are about to do or what's happening. So America decided they need a tank that can house a 75mm gun to attack. They have a good 75 gun, but it takes time to fully add the 75 to a turret. This is why they designed the M3 Lee with its 75 gun on the side. There's a 30mm on the turret and the machine guns. However, there are problems with the M3D. But first of all, the M3D is never intended as a main tank for America, as its purpose is to simply to beef up the numbers of the Allies. But there's, as said, there's a lot of problems with the M3D. First of all, the 75 gun. If the crew decided to, they want to fire the main gun, they have to move the whole. I mean, the whole tank itself just to fire the 75 gun. And there's another problem with that. The 30mm on the turret is not a, is not really the best. As it's a lot more weaker than the 75. There's another problem with the M3 Lee. The tank is high, making it the large target that the yeah, you can already see the problem with a large tank. You can I don't know, probably see it in a mile away. No, I know that's just an exaggeration, but the M3 Lee is super large. The British made the tank somehow smaller by removing the upper turret, making the tank a tad bit a little bit more smaller, but and they added a lot of more minor features. But the problem with the M3 Lee or the Grant is still there. And the Soviets has a quite reputation for the M3 Lee as they super liked it that they called the M3 Lee as the coffin for seven brothers. Yeah, the Soviets called the M3 Lee as the coffin for seven brothers. That's how horrible the M3 Lee is. So, nevertheless, the M3 Lee served its purpose as a numbered tank. As the Americans really wanted the M3 Lee just to fill in the gaps of their lacking tanks, the war. While the M3 Lee and Vance are getting destroyed left and right, the M4 Sherman is being made and incorporating a 75mm gun. And it has a 75 gun which is super super good, and the armor of the M4 Sherman is honestly as good as well, and it can house 2 or 3 machine guns depending on how you want it to be, but it can house 3 machine guns. Two at the top turret and one at the hull of the tank. And also, is it worth noting mention the M4 Sherman? The M4 Sherman has a radial engine. For those of you who doesn't know what radial engine is, basically it's an aircraft engine. The reason for having an aircraft engine on a tank because the Americans at the time or America doesn't really have that much of a or a better engine. So they decided let's take an aircraft engine, but they specifically modified it to be a lot lot more lighter and a lot more powerful, so powerful enough for the tank. 
But let's move away from the characteristics of the tank because talking about the characteristics of the tank of the M4 Sherman is worthy of the, another video of itself. But moving on, the M4 Sherman design is super good that it is one of the tanks that that has the most high survivability compared to any other tanks because this is partly due to the exit hatch is very very large and easy accessible for the each crew so making it a lot more easier of get, getting out before the tank could stop like just imagine this you're sitting in a tank or the Emperor Sherman and you can hit the parent and the commander decided that the tank is going to blow up so your exit is one of the best way to survive like there's no other way to survive an exploding tank and to get out of the tank because the exit hatch of the tank is super good or at least large enough for a crew it makes getting out a set of the tank is a lot lot more easier and faster second the reason why the emperor sherman is also good because repair or maintenance the M4 Sherman it, its parts and machines is standardized or at least module there it's modulized so basically repairing the attack is a lot more easier and faster because you can access the part of attack very very fast if you compare to other tanks the M4 Sherman repair or maintenance is super good because like you can just pop out the engine at the back and replace it like it's nothing apparently and with america's super good logistics finding uh supply parts or repair parts or spare parts whatever you wish to call it super easy honestly as the war is on europe the sherman's weapon of 75 is having a harder and harder time to penetrate germany's big cats so he decided to upgrade the Sherman with the 76 mm. With the 76 gun, destroying Germany's heavy th heavy tanks is a lot lot more easier than with the 75, as it has a lot more penetration value and more range. But despite all this, some tankers of Sherman's much much more prefer the 75 due to the fact that the 75 gun is a howitzer. Like, that's all you need to know. And having a howitzer gun makes the HE or the high explosive rounds a lot lot more stronger. As most of the time, what the M4 Sherman is fighting is infantry and soft targets like probably bunkers as well and at the aircraft and tight tanks. So countering them with this HE is a lot more makes sense. So this is why the 75 is much much more preferred because the 75 provides a lot more versatility than the 76 despite the 76 gun can penetrate the tiger and the pan panther's armor with america's industry they can make a fully built sherman every 30 minutes like just imagine every 30 minutes there's another new fully built tank of sherman this is because the Sherman is designed to be cheap and easy to be manufactured compared to the Germany's overcomplicated tanks. But here's another problem. Transporting tanks from America to Europe is very very hard. This is why America is not making any heavy tanks because it's a lot more harder on the or the logistics is a lot more harder transporting a heavy tank in an entire ocean. So this is why it makes sense for the Americans to make a medium tank. But the Sherman or the M4 Sherman has quite a bad reputation for myths. Like it takes five Shermans to defeat a single tiger. Like if you take a look of it, America is losing a lot more tanks than Germany. But this myth is simply untrue because what the LA is doing is they send five tanks for each one enemy tank. Like if they send if the enemy send five tanks, they send a whole company to counter the tanks. Also, use the kill ratio is not also to be trusted as kill ratio during battle or after battle. Tankers tend to exaggerate their kills 
making the kill route ratio as a basis for that very very poor. With all, there's a lot more to talk about the M4 Sherman and its other variants worthy of its video of itself like the M4A8, the M4A1 and there's a lot more models like there's a flamethrower tank, there's a chain tank, like that's there's too many M4 Sherman packs, so and each of them as I said is worthy of its own video itself so that's all we have to talk about now about the M4 Sherman as this is Sapphire signing off bye bye